This adventure began way back in the desert of the United Arab Emirates. If you haven't seen the previous five episodes, you can watch them here. And please subscribe and click the little bell as it helps support my channel making and sharing this content for free. From Dubai, I flew to Shiraz in Iran and later met Daniele, an Italian physicist who bought a car in Abu Dhabi using Bitcoin for us to travel the length of Iran and all the way back to our final destination of Germany via Turkey. We woke up in cars. We had driven all night from Iran and faced the riskiest part of the journey. In the previous episode in which we crossed the highly guarded border at Bazargan and went through all the military checkpoints in the middle of the night, some viewers misunderstood my fear as judgment. I love Iran. I love Turkey. I love the chance to learn from any culture different to my own. The reality is that crossing any border these days is tense as it seems that all countries have a rising fear of the foreigner. The truth is both Iran and Turkey currently have a lot of tension and especially with me being a journalist with all my film equipment and Daniele being a scientist, we appear highly suspicious to border officials, particularly in these times when there are frequent cases of espionage in both countries and so justifiably the security is really intense. But I'm so grateful to Turkey and Iran for allowing me in as a guest and I hope that you see all this work that I have done and put out for free comes from my genuine respect and awe of both cultures. We chose to drive up towards the border with Armenia to visit the medieval ruins of Ani. First recorded in the 5th century, Ani was once a great Armenian city with the height of its strength during the 11th century when it was home to around 100,000 people. And yet, on this day, we were alone. No tourists, no locals, just wandering through ruins of a ghost city with nothing but the wind carrying the faint cries of the call to prayer from a nearby mosque. The sound disappearing into the ravine below, which marks the border of Turkey and Armenia. That day, for some reason I can't even remember now, we ended up fighting. Probably we were exhausted from the stress of the border crossing and driving all night. I went off to sit alone amongst the ruins and absorb the energy of this place. So much war, so much waste, so much importance and care given to these beautiful architectural structures that have now just crumbled into insignificance. Could the men and women of centuries ago have imagined that this great city, this major trading point on the Silk Road that so many different cultures were fighting over, would eventually be abandoned? I couldn't help drawing parallels with everyday conflict between individuals. Do any fights really matter? In a century or even in one year's time, what will truly matter? I always try to remind myself of our inherent naivety when we evaluate the ultimate significance of conflict. But whether in war or a rapport between two individuals, humans are so consistently governed by the myopic ego. We couldn't stay in that peaceful ruin forever. We had a mountain range to cross, and the sheer beauty and remoteness of the road ahead calmed our hearts and reminded us not to waste a second more arguing over the trivial. Uh, can you see that? Like, look at this. Look at this. What is that? About? Are we crossing these yes, mountains? Yes, we're, we're crossing those mountains. We're crossing the mountains. Look at that light. Look at that light there. Okay, Daniela. How do you feel? What, what's the plan now? What's the plan now? Now we cross these mountains, hoping that there's no snow on the road. Okay. And um, and we, 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 we make it to the Black Sea. We make it, we make it to, to, to water again after It'll be the first, the first big major body of water that we encounter since leaving Dubai. From the Persian Gulf to the Black Sea. Non c'è spazio, 
ma nessuno capirà Troppa luce dentro la stanza Questo caldo che avanza Io non dormirò Scusa se non fanno abbastanza Ma una scuola di danza Nello stomaco Sei bella che la musica Non c'è So, Black Sea, how do you feel? Uh, From feels... snow-capped mountains to, to the Black Sea? From desert to... No, in one day though, in one day. Oh, in one day today, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. From, From ruins to snow-capped mountains. From ruins to snow-capped mountains to alpine... Uh, uh, to alpine cliffs, to canyons, to the Black Sea. Feels like we covered a lot of ground and uh, we made it just for sunset. One of the things I wasn't prepared for was how traditional some parts of Turkey are. Obviously not Istanbul or tourist spots like Cappadocia, but at this point we were still, I guess, in a very conservative part of the country in Trabzon. And after being so careful to wear the headscarf in Iran, I felt bad that I wasn't as culturally aware as I should have been. And then we, we stopped for a tea yesterday on the, on the way. And we were just sitting outside looking at the sunset. And uh, when we hugged, the waiter came and said, no, you can't do that. It's too much public affection. We had to lie and I don't really like that. I don't know. It feels, I don't like lying in general. We, we checked into a hotel late at night, exhausted after driving the entire day, and we were both separately questioned about whether we were married. If we weren't married, we would not be allowed to stay in the room we had booked, even though it had two separate beds. Daniele said that we were married, and of course, I then went into a panic about lying to them. I hate lying. I felt like we were going to get into trouble. My panic was probably uh, unnecessary, but still, it, it, it made me feel very uncomfortable. Uh, we're leaving Trabzon. What was your impression of Trabzon? I mean, it was short and sweet. Yeah, but you ate out last night. I was too dis oh, I oh, was I mean, too the tired. Fish, the fish is unbelievable. And how much unbelievable. Come to Trabzon and or any of these towns here. And how much did you pay? Nine. Uh, nine euros? Uh, yeah, like nine euros for an entire uh, uh, dorada grilled and a massive plate of fried sardines. We had another eight or nine hours of driving ahead of us as we traveled from Trabzon all the way down, hoping to get to Cappadocia by nightfall. Oh my gosh, so we're driving along and I saw this great big oven in the middle of the village and, and guess who's working the village? All the women. And look, can you see? They're, they're, they're making bread. They're making bread for the village. Of course, when I went up to take some photos, they it's so hot, it's so hot. They offered uh, me some fresh bread. It's so, it smells so good. It smells so good and it's just, uh, it's just fantastic to see like the, the, uh, these communities still exist. No, it's what a wonderful thing. Instead of going to the supermarket, just everyone in there with their like children and, and these women are just there with a, with a paddle uh, pu pulling bread in and out of the, the, the big oven and it smells incredible. Okay, andiamo, yalla. <laughs> Our long day of driving was rewarded when we arrived at a beautiful place called Esbeli Evi, an abandoned stone house that the owner restored with vintage items from his family. There's something so lovely going into a hotel where there's very few rooms and the owner says, oh yes, that couch in your room belonged to my grandmother. We light candles, play jazz music, fall into a hot bath and read up on the history of the places we can't wait to explore the next morning. We will thrive on Keep alive on just nothing but kisses with Mr. and Mrs. on little blue chairs. You so, your true so, and Robinson Crusoe. Is not so far from worldly cares as our blue room far away upstairs.
After exploring cave dwellings dating back to the 4th century, we journey on to a little village called Orte Hizar. You've probably seen Instagram selfies of the main drag of Cappadocia with hot air balloons, but for me, Orte Hizar felt like there was much more of a gentle balance between tourism and local life. We stayed at a beautiful place called the Hezen Cave Hotel and made friends with a man who worked there and grew up in this region. He told me he studied abroad thinking he should strive to get an important job, which he eventually did, becoming an oil engineer. But then over the years, he realized what he had in his hometown, where there was no oil and no big career opportunities, was actually a higher quality of life. So I grew up here, but I, I lived uh, about 11 years abroad. Yes, where? In some countries, uh, in Azerbaijan, oh, yes, uh, in right. England, mm -hmm. uh, and a little bit in Georgia. Can, can I can I tell you what I really like uh, about this area is that you, I walk through the streets and I still see the locals living here, no? And and I yeah. and I feel like some in some countries places that are so beautiful like Cappadocia, yeah. yeah. they're so beautiful that the locals have to leave because it mm -hmm. becomes completely overrun by hotels. Yeah. Here it feels different. Still, we have real culture yeah. in this town. We are lucky for this because there is no the main road. There is no the tour buses yeah. and you know the, the many hotels, many cafes, restaurants, touristic proportion things. Mm -hmm. So still we are lucky. Not like other towns. Some of the towns in the region like Göreme, yeah. Uchisar, uh, maybe Urgüp, I can say. But still the village families, the people, local people living. Yeah. They uh, you know they feed the animals like cow, like yeah. dogs. You know donkeys here. Yeah. They are going to the fields. Mm -hmm. So you can feel the the, the real you know life. Turkish you know yeah. village life. What yeah. What was it like to, to grow up in, uh, in this area? Not like a rush, this yeah. area, not yeah. like a big cities, you know, the yeah. traffic and the people very relaxed and they are very polite here yeah. because they used to see the, the foreigners mo the very foreigners. long time ago, yeah, you know, yeah. so, so it is very nice here, you know, I miss here and I came back. What do you think is, is the character of, of um, Turkish people in this area or? Uh, the in, ca character in general, in general, in general, they are very hospitality yeah. uh, more than like the big cities. Yeah. Uh, I can say hundred percent, you know, because like from like then the Istanbul, then Ankara or something. Yeah. So because they are very small, when they see the foreign people here, mm. they are very excited. I don't know why, but they are <laughs> very excited. Ah, oh, this is for, uh, you know the tourists yeah, or yeah. something. They yeah. like they like the people who comes from outside. Yeah. Really, yeah. I don't know why this is coming from inside something. Uh -huh. And there, the hospitality is very nice. Mm -hmm. We wandered the streets of Orte Hizar without a fixed plan, discovering by chance this family-run restaurant where no language was exchanged and yet we seemed to understand each other perfectly with smiles and gestures. Another thing is, you know, uh, in, in the uh, middle of Turkey here, a little bit serious, but later on they can do, you know. Sure. Uh, once you once you get to, to know them, yeah, and yeah, yeah. you're drinking and eating. Yeah, them. I can <laughs> say in this area like that. Last night we went into the town and there was that singer who There are lots of young people, and yes. I think they must be from the area, no? Even yeah. Kayserian. Uh, what do you think the, the dream is for like uh, young Turkish uh, teenagers in this area? Is it is it to stay and have their own business? Is it to move to Istanbul? Is it to go overseas and live in London mm -hmm. or New York? What, what do you okay. think? Actually, in this area, very popular, and they, they don't want to go move here from here, but okay. they want here this, the sociality, yeah. like a, like these uh, you know concerts, like yeah. theater organization, other things. So uh, the people very sad. I know the young people very sad, and yeah. even me. So yeah, yeah, yeah. we see on the uh, TV they are all in Istanbul. Right. So Istanbul is one of the places you can find everything, every day. Can they find work? Can young people find work around here? Yes, yeah. if they want to work, they can find work. Right. Yeah. Right. 
Yeah. Do so, they want work? Yeah. <laughs> Do they want to work? I want them to work. Okay. <laughs> Because they don't want to work. Right, right, right. <laughs> this, is, this is the problem of many teenagers all over the world. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, it's so, the same. Some, some mm. uh, really are young entrepreneurs, but I guess others, they maybe just want to be on their phones. <laughs> maybe we think like this, but they are with the technology. Sure, they are yeah. not, uh, they grow with the technology. They don't use their physical, uh, you know, power too, too much time. Yeah. And when they find a physical power job or something, yeah. they, they're fed up. You know, yeah. they give up, sorry. They yeah. give up very quick. So uh, I recommend them. Don't give up and go on the work. Yeah. And, yeah. Thank you so much. You're thank welcome. You, thank you're you welcome. for all your help and your advice you're and welcome. The, the wonderful welcome you have given us. Because thank you very much. It's really great to get out of a long car drive and see uh, someone as friendly as you. So. Okay, okay, thank you. Down a little country road, we discovered my favorite restaurant in the whole of Turkey. It's so strange because we were the only ones dining there, and yet the quality of the food was extraordinary. We even tried to go back on other days, but they seemed to just open whenever they felt like it. Everyone else looks like a pirate, <laughs> um, but it looks super, super local, and uh, it's very, very authentic. This one's particularly sandy. I don't know if it's because it hasn't settled yet, and I have to let, so let it sit longer, or if this is just how real Turkish men drink their coffee. Yeah, sandy men, men like that. One last breakfast in this beautiful village and then we set off in the car for another nine or ten hour journey to finally reach the magical city of Istanbul. Istanbul is everything I hoped it would be. Gritty and glamorous, alive, breathing, sweating, pulsing, yet historic, political, poetic and poised. And I'm hit by this ache in my chest that I have felt in Paris, Rome, New York, Barcelona, That fantasy, that question one asks of a city with reverence and rapture. Could I become a part of you? Your mystery, your beauty, could I weave myself into the fabric of your culture? And if I did, who would I become? 
Because I think the best cities hold this allure, this power to make us question whether perhaps our identity, our destiny has more potential than we previously thought before stepping foot in this magical foreign land. Sophia is possibly the most breathtaking architectural experience I have ever encountered. And as it is one of the few structures in the world to honor both Christian and Muslim religions, being part mosque, part Greek Orthodox Christian cathedral, it is an apt conclusion as we near the end of our journey across the Middle East. Like this magnificent basilica, this adventure from Dubai to Istanbul affirms both beauty and confusion. I have so many mixed feelings about tradition, Islam, the Western media, the polemics, the prejudice. This trip has taught me how much I have yet to learn about this extraordinary region of the world. So thank you for tolerating my naivety as I clumsily struggle my way through. You certainly can't understand a foreign culture just by passing through as a traveler. But as we left Turkey for our final stretch home, driving through Bulgaria, Serbia, Hungary and Austria, I thought to myself that in spite of all the controversy, I can confirm that if you show strangers that you have a curious, respectful and open heart, most people in this world want to smile, they want to connect, they want to thank you for making the journey to their home. Thank you for watching this adventure. Please subscribe to my channel or support me on Patreon if you're able to do so, so that I can continue making films that celebrate the things that unite rather than divide humanity.